Hey, what's going on? So uh, it's time for our yearly, at this point, Super Metroid playthrough. I don't know if I did one in 2020 or 2019. I think I did one in one of those two years, but I'm not sure which one. But anywho, it's time for our 2021 edition of the Super Metroid speed run. <sighs> I'm doing this pretty late at night, so uh, I'm, I'm a little tired. I also don't want to make too much noise, so I'm going to be keeping it down. It's going to be a pretty low-key playthrough, just, just running through Super Metroid. I've got Xander right behind me. You can see him. See him right, right there? That's him. My little buddy. He's just kind of sleeping right now. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, go over this real quick, and then I'm going to start. So I'm playing this on a modded PlayStation Classic, so not the original system. Playing it with a PS1 controller, which is going to be kind of weird. Um, I actually I wanted to use a SNES controller, an 8-bit dough SNES controller, but I could not get it to work on the PlayStation Classic. It's always worked before, but this one time it didn't want to work, so I'm forced to play Super Metroid with a PlayStation controller, which I've never done before. So this is going to be interesting. But it's close enough to a SNES controller that it'll probably be okay. Um, the objective here, very simple. Speed run, no saves, no deaths, and uh, no major sequence breaking. So I'm not going to be skipping Spore Spawn or anything like that. Um, this is going to basically be a super chill speed run. Super chill. And that's about it. So yeah, thank you for joining me. If this is your first time, I'm not a professional speedrunner or anything like that, so don't expect anything super fancy pants. Um, but I have been playing this game for the last 25 years on and off. So hopefully I'm getting a little better at it each time. So basically the ground rules for this speedrun, three, uh, no deaths, no saves, no major sequence breaks. So don't expect me to skip Spore Spawn or anything like that. Um, it's going to be a fairly simple speed run. No real frills, no major tricks. I also have to keep it down because it's very late and I've got neighbors upstairs that I need to think about. So uh, it's going to be a pretty, pretty low key speed run this time around. Just a quick play of Super Metroid. Every year around the beginning of summer, early summer, I always get the kind of hankering to do a Super Metroid run. So this is what usually happens. Just very out of nowhere, out of the blue, I'll just do like an impromptu Super Metroid playthrough. And each time, hopefully, I get a slightly better time than I did on previous playthroughs. At least we can hope so. So, yeah. Yeah, so Samus, she, she rescued a Metroid on SR388, which happened in Metroid 2, right? Then she brought it back to the Galactic Federation because they were going to uh, harness its power for the good of mankind and all that jazz. Um, of course, it turns out that they really wanted to weaponize the Metroid, which she finds out later. She kind of makes the mistake of trusting the Federation throughout this entire series. And trusting the Federation is really not the best idea, quite frankly. I wouldn't be a bit surprised, and this is just a theory, but I wouldn't be a bit surprised if the villains of Metroid Dread turned out to actually be the Federation. That's right. Those indestructible droids that are hunting Samus, they uh, might have been sent by the Federation to take her out. Federation actually has plenty of reason to want Samus dead at this point. She's caused them a lot of trouble, and she knows too much. And she also, uh, after Metroid Fusion, she has Metroid DNA in her system. So at that point, Samus basically is the last Metroid. 
you know? Because this little guy suffers a unfortunate fate in this game. Looks good. Looks good so far. So yeah, I think the Federation is after Samus and Metroid Dread, and I don't think she knows it. So I think it's an ambush. And I think that those uh, indestructible robots that are after her are trying to collect her DNA. Oh man, I'm already, I'm already messing up really bad on this part. But I don't know, we'll see. There's also the element of the evil Shozo, which is probably going to figure into Metroid Dread as well. Alright, I'm just going to say I have a feeling... I have a feeling that I am not going to break any of my speedrun records. Here we go. I think I'm going to possibly be a little bit laid back with this speed run. I don't know if I'm going to break any of my previous speed running records or anything like that. Um, I'm not really planning to. I'm just going to kind of have fun here and take it easy. And not make too much noise because it's late at night. And there are other people in my building. Shoot, messed that up. I've got the lights turned off in here so that I'm illuminated entirely by the TV, which I thought would be kind of cool. A lot of colors in this game, and all those colors are going to bounce right off onto me here. And it should make for an interesting uh, little video, hopefully. At this point, there's another missile that you can grab up here, but most speedrunners do not do that. Oops. Oh man, I messed that up. No, I didn't. It's okay. Yeah, most speedrunners do not grab this second missile because it's it's kind of out of the way. It eats up some time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab it for this run. Yeah, truth be told, I want to get as many items as I can reasonably get without spending too much time on it. Because um, this is supposed to be a no death run, no saves, no deaths. Um, so I need to be pretty well equipped, especially by the time I get to Ridley, because Ridley is extremely challenging in this game. Not extremely challenging. I mean, if you're well equipped, he's no problem at all. But if you're speedrunning and you're not too well equipped, well, then that's, a, that's an issue. Oh, damn it. My speedrun game is uh, a little bit out of practice, you could say. I haven't really played this game very much since the last time I did a speedrun video. So it's not like I've been practicing in the interim, unfortunately. Oh no! Damn it. 
So this hallway is here to teach you how to jump. And it does a very good job of that. That was good, I guess. I always wonder if I can make it through that door before it closes, but I've never, never once been able to do it. I know it's possible though. I've seen speedrunners pull it off. in Metroid history. I guess if you count the Metroids in Metroid 2 as individual bosses, uh, some of the alpha Metroids in that game are pretty darn easy. First level is beaten, first area, level one, if you will. If this were like a normal game from that era, if this weren't a master class of game design, if it were just a regular platformer, that would be level one that we just beat. I'm gonna go for the charge beam for a second there, but you know what? I'm gonna skip the charge beam for now. Um, I don't think I need it for spore spawn. Oh jeez. Taking a lot of damage. This could be the end of the run. This could be it right here. So I'm, I'm going to rely on the spore spawn to give me item pickups because I'm going to need missiles to actually damage it since I didn't get the charge beam. Should still be a pretty basic fight though. I mean, this is 
Definitely one of the easiest bosses in the Metroid series, just like the previous boss. This boss would actually be really difficult if they just raised the floor, which I assume is, you know, it's designed the way it is for a reason. But yeah, if some, if some hacker wanted to make a Metroid hack where the floor was raised to, like, just above where Samus is now, you'd actually be forced to dodge the boss for the entire fight. Probably make for a much more exciting fight, actually. Oop, Xander just got up. I gotta let him out. Can make it a little more interesting by just like dodging <laughs> like I'm doing now. Just just duck and dodge. That was a miss. Ooh, was that a was that a triple hit? I think that was a triple hit. Go up, buddy. No, no, he's okay. He's just hot. It's like extremely hot here. That's another reason why I might be a little bit low energy in this video. Uh, honestly, I'm not low energy per se. Like, I feel fine, but I'm a little more subdued than I might usually be because it's very hot here right now. Very hot. You know what? I always I always do these Super Metroid runs at the beginning of summer for some reason. Although it's technically at this point it's what the middle of July, so yeah, it's not the not the beginning of summer anymore. But my point is I always do these uh, speed runs during like really hot weather for some reason. So I made my own bet on that one. All right, gonna grab this. Charge beam really quickly here. I mean, the charge beam is completely skippable, but you really shouldn't. Shoot. I told this story before in other speedruns, but this room right here had me stumped the first time I played this game. I was stumped for like, I don't know, probably half an hour or so on that one room. Like I knew there was a way to get across it, I just didn't know what. And Nintendo Power said to just like dash, like dash across the room. And I'm like, what does that mean? Like, like run across the room? I didn't realize that there's actually a dash button in this game. And it's a lot like a Mario game in that you want to hold down the dash button at all times. Not all times, but, you know, situationally, you know, you use the dash button to move. Oh no, that was bad. Can I get out of the water? Can I get out? Oh, I'm trying to show off here. What's going on? No, it's not letting me out. I mean, I know you can get out by doing that, but... Jeez. There is a wee bit of input lag, unfortunately, 
on the uh, PlayStation Classic. A wee bit of input lag. I'm just gonna reset this room. Um, on the uh, Wii Virtual Console, which is what I usually play this on, uh, there is also a wee bit of input lag. Wow, I am like suddenly completely unable to wall jump. What is happening here? There we go. Uh oh, I think I. Oh no, that's really bad. I am out of super missiles. There is a way to fix this though. There we go. Phaser beam, also completely optional, as a matter of fact. That minute or so that I just spent trying to get up here, could have skipped it. Yeah, you can skip the charge beam and the spacer, and still have no issues defeating Kraid at this point. Yeah, that's how I learned that this game had a dash button, was getting through that room. And the dash button is actually crucial for this little uh, trick right here. Typically at this point, the game wants you to go into Norfair and get the high jump boots. But instead, if you can just angle your jump just right, like so. Try to catch that ledge right there, jump up. It's not easy, especially when you're out of practice like me. So yeah, that lets you completely skip the high jump moves. Not completely, I mean, you have, to, you have to get them in a few minutes, but you don't need them for that jump. And that actually saves you probably three or four minutes of time right there. Okay, I need more super missiles if possible. Okay, you have to be careful for this guy because he does a ton of damage if you bump into him. Ooh, super missiles, just what I needed. Grab that energy for good luck. Here is the remains of some other hunter. That one sprite right there adds so much lore to the game. It means that there were other hunters here before Samus and that they failed in their missions. All right, here we go, Creed. Let's see if I can defeat him before he stands up to full, full size here. Probably not, but I'm gonna try. Here we go. Nope. <laughs> How do people do that? Like, I've seen speedrunners jump up and fire like three super missiles at once, basically. Boom! Thank you. 
All right, making pretty good time here. really close. That was really close. I realized at the last second there that if one of those bombs missed and there was still one latched onto me, there was a possibility I was going to die right there. Yeah, I was letting my energy get kind of low because I knew I was going to be getting an energy tank soon, but you still have to be very, very careful in those circumstances. All right, Norfair. Whew. We are moving right along. That was just the easy part, though. I think we're about 25% of the way through the game, maybe, at this point. Maybe a little less than that. Maybe like 20, 20%. This... I'm trying to remember, was this as far as Nintendo Power covered in their, their coverage of this game? I don't think so. I think it was actually Krokelmeyer. Yeah, we're just going to get the high jumpers. I'm not going to do anything fancy here. weird. Wow, what the shite? Okay, if I let it if I let it hang a little bit before I do the wall jump, it seems to work a little better. I'm not sure if it's an issue with input lag or the PlayStation controller or what, but it's harder to wall jump than it usually is. Might also be that I'm out of practice, but I don't think that's it. Like, I think I'm getting really good timing on some of these wall jumps and they're, they're just kind of hanging up. I don't know. And right here we're coming up on the very last power up that I got in this entire game. I was at 95% the first few times I played this, or what was it, 99, I guess, 99%, and this was the only item left, so yeah. Oh wow, I messed that up. Took a ton of unnecessary damage there, it's okay though. Yeah, that that missile that I just grabbed though, I could not find that missile the first first few times I played this game. I found every other power up in the entire game, but that missile just completely eluded me. Oh boy. Now this part has another very challenging wall jump skip. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it considering I'm having some issues with my wall jumping, but here goes. 
Oh, I did it. No, nope, I didn't do it. That was good though. I'm gonna try that again. Oof, perfect. Perfect. Nope. Don't fall. Don't fall. Don't fall. I really can't spare the health right now. Oh no. Why did I do that? Here we go. Boy, this game really teaches you to just kind of like look everywhere for power-ups. Just blast random walls and there's a fairly decent chance you're going to find a power-up hidden within. Isn't that right, little buddy? Where, where is that guy? He's around here somewhere. Okay, this is going to be a tough jump. <sighs> Damn it. It's a tough jump if you're trying not to take any damage. If you don't care about taking damage, it's really not that tough. In my case, I did take damage, so that's unfortunate, but it's okay. So we got the wave beam early. That should uh, power up my attacks here. It also lets me fire through walls, which is nice. Yeah, these guys are definitely uh, much quicker to fight now. I have to watch my energy at this point. Shoot, I made a mistake. I have to go back. <sighs> wow, very uncharacteristic of me 
to forget what I'm doing in Super Metroid. But for a brief moment there, I just completely flatlined on uh, what I was doing next. I was on my way up to get the power bombs, and I'm like, wait a minute, I don't have the ice beam. And it just whew, took me a second to kind of get my bearings there. Yeah, very uncharacteristic. I, I typically, typically always kind of know what I'm doing in this game. Know where I'm going next, you know. That's what happens when you play the game 35 times, or however many times it's been. Alright, there we go. Now I'm on the right track again. Whew. Okay, so with this I can get the power bombs. And, uh... Since I'm not doing any skips, I have to come back down here to get the grappling beam after that. Now we're on the right track. Whew. All right. Looking good. Looking good. Absolutely whiffing this. Look at that. So, there are four things in particular that I need to watch out for in a uh, no-death run of this game. Which I guess technically every speed run is a no-death run. Uh, when you're doing like no saves, no death, no nothing, you know, one misstep could be your last kind of playthrough. There are four things I have to watch out for in particular. Uh, three of them are bosses. Uh, three bosses that can definitely beat me anytime I play this game. Uh, Dragon in Meridia, if I mess up the grappling beam trick. Uh, the Golden Torizo in Lower Norfair, 
if I uh, don't bring adequate weapons and uh, equipment. And uh, Ridley, of course. Again, if I don't bring adequate stuff to the Ridley fight, it is entirely possible to lose that fight. Main thing is energy tanks. If I get to the Ridley fight with less than, uh, or fewer rather, fewer than six energy tanks, there's a very good chance of losing. The fourth, fourth uh, spot where I can die on this playthrough that I have to watch out for is not a boss at all. It is the, uh, it is the spike room in wrecked ship. The spike, that spike room in wrecked ship, the, uh, the one with the little platforms that you have to jump off of. There's spikes like everywhere. That room has actually killed me in uh, past playthroughs. It's not even a boss, but it's killed me. For some reason, running back through this room is much harder than running through it in the first place. Should I use the uh, health health dispensary over there? Probably, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna not gonna play it safe here. Play it loud. That's right. I'm gonna live on the edge. Grappling beam, real quick. I'd say we're actually coming up on the halfway point of the game now. I'm not even going to bother. I was going to go back up there and get that missile, but you know what, I'm just not going to bother. We don't need it at this point. I switched off my ice beam because I, uh, I want to be able to defeat enemies as quick as possible. And the ice beam actually uh, poses the danger of slowing me down by freezing enemies in my way. The question is, does the ice beam do more damage to this guy? You would think it would. I don't know. I don't know if the ice beam actually adds any damage. As far as I can tell, it actually subtracts damage in a roundabout way. Because enemies that normally take one hit to be take two hits with the uh, ice beam. But yeah, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if this guy took added damage from the ice beam. But uh, who knows? I'm handling him pretty handily here. Alright, bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Boss is like over there thrashing around and I'm just grabbing energy tanks. Alright, get out of here, dude. Fight's over. I like to try to kind of dodge the spikes on this part. Oh, I think one of them might have, might have nicked me there. Pooh. 
Yeah, I just needed a few minutes to warm up. I'm, I'm really starting to get the hang of this now. Oops, bungled that. Grappling Beam is one of the most fun toys in this game, easily. I'm so glad that they found a way to kind of work it into Metroid Prime as well. Oh no! Can't hurt. Can't hurt to get another power bomb. Where's Xander? He's lurking. He's lurking somewhere around here. some issues there. Fair is done for now. Um, we're probably about halfway through the game. So what's our time now? Like 40 minutes or so? Yeah, that, that seems about right for me at this juncture. Oh shoot, I gotta I gotta re equip the ice beam. That was a clutch jump right there. Should have just blasted it. Oh, wow. This is 
possibly the one part of Super Metroid that I don't like is that they make you backtrack through this part a couple times. But hey, at least the music is good. That counts for a lot, doesn't it? Oh. Hey, good thing spikes don't kill you instantly in this game. That would be bad. There are a lot of spikes in this game. Well, say, say bye to the good music for the moment, but we will be back in a little while, so don't worry too much. <sighs> How's my hair looking? I've got my hair all slicked back. Look like a drug dealer. All right, let's see. Oh. Should I pop over to the ship? Very quick detour just to get my ammo back here. It might save me some time in the long run. Okay, we are not saving. Yep, no saves on this run. Keeping the stakes high. Yeah, damn it, I should have opened that door before I ran over to the ship, because now I'm missing a super missile. Just like this, it's probably better if I skip the fancy tricks and just go with the basics. In this case, we're just gonna go ahead and swing. Oh, by the way, I really love this part. I love the way you can see like a distant landscape in the background there. It really makes me wonder Makes me wonder, like, what's over there? What else is on this planet? We got this kind of stormy sky in the background. Really cool stuff. Oh, went to the wrong, to the wrong wall. There we go. around here and I don't want to miss it. it. Might be behind a locked door though, so I don't know. Yeah, I think it is behind a locked door. Actually, damage you at this point. I gotta stop getting in here.
Yeah, this is the game punishing you for using a super missile against him. Because I think it wants you to just stick to regular missiles for this fight. But you can use this uh, charge spin attack to just kind of jump through all his attacks. I mean, it's semi low. Could definitely get worse. There's the super missile. Alright. Because it was behind the locked door. Yeah, I definitely want that because I've got a real deficiency of super missiles at this point. The two key items you need for Ridley later on are uh, super missiles and energy tanks. That's it. Those are the those are the two things that'll that'll make or break the fight. At least for me. I mean, there's plenty of speedrunners who can beat him like hardly taking any hits and so forth. But uh, I definitely take hits on that fight. So any little energy tanks I can get. Thank <laughs> you. 
actually, you know what? I'm just gonna go this way. I mean, there are definitely power-ups to get around here, but none of them are energy tanks and none of them are super missiles. At least not on this side, so I'm just gonna kind of scurry through here. Alright, this part is optional, but there are a few power-ups over here. I'm just going to go ahead and grab them. Just to kind of shore up my reserves a little bit here. Yeah, pun, pun was not intended on that one, shoring up my reserves. I really do just need to shore up whatever energy tanks I've got. It looks like I would be going into the Ridley fight with six energy tanks, which is cutting it a bit close for me. There's a very good chance I would lose with that many energy tanks. But I just got basically the seventh, so now I'll have seven energy tanks going into the fight. Actually, I'll have eight because there's another one that I can get before I leave here that's not uh, out of the way. Oh, whoa, okay. Alright, this is, this is the room that has killed me before on uh, no no death, no save runs. And this is why, this is why it has killed me. Very dangerous. Whew, okay, made it through without taking any hits. That's a first. There we go. This one is actually pretty critical. In the past when I did speedruns, I would usually skip this one, and then I'd get to Ridley and I would struggle with the fight. So this time I'm just not gonna do that.
Entering the third act here, the home stretch of the game, kind of. Not really though. We've still got uh, about three areas ahead of us, and they're the three hardest areas. Well, the two hardest areas, because the, the final area is a bit of a gimme, honestly. I should just roll under all this stuff. Oh wow. better time than I usually do on this part, judging from the music, because the kick-in is happening right now, and in past playthroughs, the kick-in happened when I was in that elevator thing. Uh-oh. hate this room. Yeah, when I was a kid, this room actually killed me several times. It's a horrible room. That's the wrong way. Go back. Crucial. Absolutely crucial. I think that's our third one now? Third or fourth? And yes, absolutely crucial that I get those. I always found this area really depressing because of the music. Like, I don't know, I find this music really depressing. But... I don't know, it might be more creepy than depressing. Maybe that's what they were going for, I don't know. Alright, 
Here we go. Going the wrong way. Go, 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 go. I'm not sure what happened, but I lost my video recording there. All right, I'm unpausing now. This guy is taking all my missiles here. Desperately need more super missiles. Neat little skip there. Keeps you from having to go through the maze from the other side. Just need more super missiles. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is the first of the three big bosses that are going to pose a threat. Let's so see how I do with this. this with the music, like the boss comes flying in right as the music kicks in. Oh wow, I'm taking a lot of damage. First of the big three. I'm gonna actually grab all the power ups on this one. There we go. Yeah, missiles are pretty obsolete at this point. I'm basically just grabbing them to help with the final area. So I want to make sure that I have enough missiles for that last room where you have to use missiles to blast all the uh, glass walls and everything. You do not want to run out of missiles in that room and have to do it over again.
beam in the game by about five times makes everything easier. This is weird. They're blocking my charge shots but not my regular shots. Doesn't make any sense. Watch this, I love the way the plasma beam just zips through these things. Look at that. So it immediately shows you how much more powerful your new weapon is. the way the uh, the baby dragons kind of make an appearance in that room just now they, they kind of you only see them for a second and then they kind of sink into the quicksand because they're that's they kind of just hang out down there but yeah you see those things at the end of the fight with the big dragon and uh, it's kind of cool that you actually have a chance to fight them elsewhere if you want to when I was a kid, I designed like uh, Metroid 4 in a notebook, and it had, I think, 12 main areas, and each area was like this sprawling uh, area with a, a map and everything. And uh, one of the 12 areas was like an aquatic area, and it had all of uh, Dragon's children in it as like mini bosses. Except that they weren't really mini bosses, they were like the actual area bosses, but there was uh, five or six of them, I don't remember. Wait, what? I could have sworn that was a shortcut. It's not a shortcut. Alright, I may have gone the wrong way. All right, we've got a small problem. Damn it. Yeah, we've got a minor problem. There's a reserve tank I have to grab, and my energy is very low. But anyway, yeah, I had like five or six Dragons as the bosses in the aquatic area, and they were supposed to be like the children of this Dragon, like the actual children, except they they were all like grown up. So yeah, so basically you were fighting five or six Dragons throughout this area, and uh, each one of them was basically like its own puzzle because you had to defeat each one of them a certain way with the grappling beam and everything. 
So uh, the kind of the fun of it was figuring out how to defeat each one with whatever puzzle you were given in their rooms. Man, Plasma View is just like pure destruction. Just absolute pure devastation. set on tanks now for Ridley. Matter of fact, I probably have more than I need, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I just kind of did a little loop-de-loop -loop just to get that reserve tank because I am definitely concerned about my energy. I could just farm some energy pellets from enemies, but I really, you know, I'm doing well on time and I don't want to mess it up. particularly challenging area so I just have to be really careful on this part oh, my energy is so low uh, what am I doing Energy is so low and I have like no reserve tank energy either.
What if that, what if that was like a little false alarm right there? Like you see the, the top of the missile and it, it's like a callback to when you first meet Ridley at the beginning and you see his eye. I wonder if that was supposed to be like a little false alarm to make you think that you're about to fight Ridley. This is the second of the big three bosses that might actually defeat me. We'll see. some more energy first. That was really the main concern was just getting up energy. Alright. So yeah, basically just Ridley is left at this point. Second to last energy tank that I'm probably going to get, but the last one before Ridley. So whatever I've got now, that's what I'm going with. Looks like seven, seven energy tanks. Seven energy tanks plus whatever I can get added to my reserve tanks. So that's it.
All right. Sorry, I just I just realized that I'm like super tired. I think I'm making a good time though. I guess we'll find out. For a second here because those guys took like all my uh, energy. Thank <laughs> you. 
Obviously, it's not in there anymore. Nice little bit of continuity there, though. I gotta say, now that I've gotten used to the controls, playing this with a PlayStation controller really isn't that difficult after all. It's, or awkward, I guess is a better word. Yeah, I, I thought it was really awkward at first, but you know, it's turned out to be great, actually. I think, I'm, I, think I still prefer the SNES controller, though. Just because it feels normal, you know what I mean? But the PlayStation controller suffices just fine. comes the cool part where you get to go all the way back up to the surface with all the items that you've gathered over the course of the game. You get to blast your way back up to the surface.
actually made this part debatably more difficult. <laughs> Damn it. Let's reset this room. Yeah, they made this part debatably more difficult because um, because the screw attack destroys the platforms. Typically on this part I run back up to where the ship is parked and I go through criteria to get to the final area. But this time around I'm going to try something slightly different. Someday, I look at all these, these unopened doors here. Just tons of unopened doors. Someday, I'd really like to 100% this game again. Because I've only 100% of this game like one time ever, and the rest of it has been speed runs. And I would love to try that one more time. Because I feel like there's so much of this game that I like never see, because I only play the. Uh, Required parts, you know what I mean? Yeah, so many little side areas and secrets that I that I don't really fool with at all. Alright, we have a moment here to chill. <laughs> My cat is uh, blocking the TV. Let me see if I can switch it around real quick here. Yep, there he is. Blocking the TV. before that it's kind of a gimme area and uh, it is so I'm not too concerned about this we're past all the uh, potentially difficult parts uh, that I was concerned about so we'll be okay from here on out Yeah. <laughs> 
and super missiles from the uh, Metroids. Oh, well. succeeded in being able to do that. Yep, I can't do it. That's still the largest Metroid that we've ever seen in, in any of the Metroid games. That's not like a queen or something. I guess the only thing I'm really missing are super miss missiles. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to be cutting it very close on missiles. show you Xander. He's very excited right now by all the uh, shapes that are moving around on the screen. Yep, cutting it very close on missiles, but it looks like we're fine. That's good. Oof, don't miss. Don't miss. Don't miss. Super missiles left, and I, I did it. All right. Yeah, that would have been really bad if I'd run out of missiles there. I would have had to go all the way back and recharge my missiles, and it just would have been a mess. Yeah, so pro tip. On that first phase of Mother Brain, do not miss any of your super missile shots. You need about 15 of them, I think, to, to finish the fight. Fall or something like that. So yeah, do not miss. Once you get to this phase, it's much easier because you can use the charge beam. Charge beam does not break glass, though. This fight is like nothing compared to Ridley and Dragon. Alright, let's get this over with and get out of here. Yeah, I grew up with Metroid 2, so I'm not really crazy about what happens at the end of this game. With the uh, little Metroid.
this this might not be much of a fight, but it's actually a cinematic masterpiece for the Super Nintendo. This whole fight. The way she like starts to come back to life and you see like blood, little puffs of blood just as she stirs. People who didn't play Metroid 2 were probably very confused at this point if they didn't know the story. But I mean, the, the whole point of this game is like rescuing that little Metroid from Ridley. So it's actually really, really sad to get get to this part and have all that stuff happen with him. After this, this is this is it for the space pirates. No, I missed that. I was on the wrong floor. That's a okay, it's whatever. Take this beam into the rest of the game. Like replay from the beginning with this beam. I'm pretty sure there's a hack though that lets you that lets you do it. It's, it's a cool idea, but I have a feeling that in practice it'll probably get pretty boring. Having this beam from the start because you would just absolutely uh, obliterate everything in your path. They pose a threat to you. So yeah, I imagine, imagine it would get kind of boring after a little while. My god, this is a long shaft. The lava. Fun fact, the lava actually rises in this room as well. It doesn't just rise in the previous room. If you take too long in this room, where the lava's like right behind you, you'll actually see the lava rising up here as well. Yeah, I just... I know you're supposed to go and you're supposed to save the, the Dakola and the Ikuns and everything, but... I'm just too tired. I'm too tired to save the animals. I'm just gonna get on the ship and get out of here. Get out of here. Alright. Oh, Alright. Boom. That's right. Oh, that's bright. Whoa. Oh. Did you just see a real bright light? Alright. There we go. Here comes the ship. Let's let's see what my time is. Oh wait, is it getting something my time or? Or is that the end? No, it's now. This is it. Your time. 
132, wow. 132. Uh, 132 is actually not, um, but you can't see me now. Hello, still here. Yeah, 132 is actually pretty good for being out of practice and everything. I think my, my best time ever was like 114 or something like that, 112. So that actually wasn't that far off from my best time ever, especially when you factor in that I had to stop and farm a few times because I was afraid of losing all my energy. So if I'd actually like stopped at a couple of save points along the way, or even just like the save point before Ridley, I would not have been nearly as worried about losing all my energy and I would not have had to stop and farm. So different things like that could have, could have gone better. If, it, if I weren't doing a no death run, I could have done those things better. But yeah, 132 is, is not bad at all. I'm happy with this. I'm happy with this time. And uh, that's it for this year's uh, Super Metroid speedrun. It has concluded for another year. So maybe next year I'll give it another shot and see how it shakes out. Anyway, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time.